Yeah, this live. Oh, okay. Hey, everyone. Sarah here. We're at the 155th annual Sisseton Wapton Oyate Wachipi in Sisseton, South Dakota, on the Lake Traverse Dakota Indian Reservation. We're here with Indian Collective, and we're here for a very special reason for the Collective Abundance Fund survey dissemination. It is a part of our community engagement process where we're inviting Indigenous people in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota to be a part of designing the Collective Abundance Fund a groundbreaking new grant opportunity that the Indian Collective will be offering, uh, slated to distribute nearly $50 million to, in 2023 to Indigenous people where we're redefining wealth on our own terms. And so uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to take you around the powwow and we're going to show you where we're set up. And we also have a couple people we're going to be talking to. We've, we've administered several surveys here so far. And so um, right now we're going to... We're going to quickly go check out the, the booth for the Collective Abundance Fund. So we're going to uh, check out a couple of our team members over here who are uh, administering surveys right now as we speak. You see a few people here taking the surveys. We got these two booths set up. On the left-hand side, you see some folks taking the survey. We have some paper surveys. We have surveys on laptops. And we also have the QR codes where you can scan your QR code and take the survey on your phone or your own electronic device. So here we have a couple women taking the survey. There you see Gabby Strong, NDN Collective's uh, Managing Director of NDN Foundation. And then we also have <laughs> Terry Peterson here. Terry Peterson is the Program Manager for the Collective Abundance Fund. Two beautiful Dakota women and matriarchs of NDN Collective who are a big part of designing this process. And over here at this other table here, we have our friend Sharon, who is helping uh, distribute gifts and, and some swag to folks. So after everyone takes the survey, they're able to pick something from this table. So we have some water bottles here to keep cool in this powwow heat. We have some bags that say Collective Abundance Fund, some drawstring backpacks, some uh, coin bags, some chip clips, t-shirts, inflatable balls, and also some notepads. And um, are we still? Okay, okay, just checking. Thanks everyone, we're just working with our, our uh, reception here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go around and we're gonna talk to some people who've already taken the survey. We wanna hear from them how what really stood out to them about this survey we want to ask them some questions about what wealth means to them as an indigenous person also we'll ask some of the questions that were inside the survey but what we're going to do right now is we're going to hop on this this ride here and we're going to take a ride around the powwow and we'll show you what's going on right now we're actually in the middle of a or getting close to uh being on a break should i hop on in the back here or in, front. in front okay so i'm gonna hop them in the front and lorenzo's gonna be in the back and uh, thank you so much for, for driving us here. What was your name again? Stephen Farmer. Stephen Farmer, and you're from? I'm the, from the system of Oyate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I thought you mentioned, for some reason, I thought you said Rosebud. Yes, that's where, that's where my dad's from. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you're Rosebud and SWO. So thank yes. you so much for, yeah. for taking us around. Are you on the powwow committee? I'm on the, um, I'm the uh, security. Oh, OK, cool. Well, thank you so much for being willing to take us around here. So we're gonna check out the powwow. Hey, there's my nephew right there. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna take a drive around the powwow here. It's a really beautiful powwow. It's the 155th annual powwow, one of the longest running powwows in North America. And uh, like many powwows across Indian country, this powwow on the 4th of July is one that has unique history. Uh, we're here right at the main entrance of the powwow. Uh, you hear the MC, I believe that's Jerry Dearly right now. I think they're getting ready to retire the colors for the dinner break, the supper break. It's about 5 o'clock, and after the supper break, uh, we'll be back for the grand entry. Hi. Hello. And so we're... <laughs> but, um, so while we're, we're going around, we're just checking out the pow here, a lot of cool food stands. Uh, Everybody likes to come. This is one of my favorite powers to come to to check out the food stands where there's some really good soup, lots of good bread, good lemonades. Uh, one of my favorite stands is Twisted Sisters. Do you have a favorite stand? Twisted Sisters, Twisted yeah. Sisters? That's Mine too. One. It's really good. What's your favorite thing to get over there? I got the corn soup and yeah. uh, two fry breads. Yep, I like that too. Then last night I had the I had the spam and cheese uh, on fry bread, which is really good too. Um, 
All right, so, and then they got some, some nice, of course, vendors around here, some native artists and vendors um, selling beads over there. That's my good friend over there. I see her at all the powwows, so check out the vendors. We got Hustle Tribe over here. We got some beadwork, um, Candyman's Crafts. But uh, yeah, this is what's what's going on here today at the Sisseton Wapton 155th Annual Wachipi in Sisseton, South Dakota, on the Lake Traverse Dakota Indian Reservation. But yeah, back to the back to the reason why we're here. This is the third powwow that the Indian Collective has come to to administer the survey for the Collective Abundance Fund. And the Collective Abundance Fund survey is a part of designing the what will soon be the Collective Abundance Fund to, to be distributed in 2023. And it's a really unique grant opportunity in that it is for individuals, individual Native people in Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. And uh, last year, in 2021, Indian Collective was, was uh, given an award of uh, $50 million to redistribute uh, for the purpose of bridging the wealth gap, knowing that the, there are wealth disparities among uh, white folks in in America and people of color like black and indigenous people. Um, but Stephen, maybe we can talk to you for a moment since you have taken the survey, right? So Stephen, you've taken the survey. Um, so the survey, thank you so much for being willing to take it and for being willing to drive us also. Okay. Yeah. Say hi to the camera. Hello. And again, um, for, for folks who didn't get a chance to see you, tell us again uh, your name and where you're from. My name's Stephen Farmer. I'm from the Crawford family on the system Wapton Oyate, which is my mother's tribe. Then my dad's from Rosebud. And you just took the survey a bit ago, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so... What, were, what is something that stood out to you about the survey that just kind of comes to mind off the top of your head? Well, I mentioned wealth, which is kind of a touchy subject for me because it makes, makes me feel, you know, less of a taxpayer that, you know, lives in America when, when we don't have that opportunity to... Yeah. To go, but I got uh, two associate degrees, and um, I'm I'm just dis on disability, and I still still trying to work. I'm still trying to go. I might get back to the college. That's where I I got my degree. So hopefully that will go good with me. To have a break next week, so we'll be probably getting after that. They have a restoration project back there with native plants. So. Very be cool. Good. That sounds like a really cool project. So uh, one of the questions in the survey, one of the main questions is, do you think that there is a difference between how indigenous people define wealth and how non-indigenous people define wealth, native or non-native people? Do you think there's a difference? I think so. For the fact that, uh, like I said, there's not really too much of an opportunity in this area, but it's kind of like for me it's like it seems like it's not what you know it's who you know and if you don't have that connection especially with farming when we live in a good area the red river area it just seems like we we can't we can't um get to that next level because of the way the the lease land is set up and how, how people that own land they got different percentages and it makes it hard for for that landowner and all them landowners to do something like farming because that's what the reservation was created for to have that and then if we had that we'd be wealthy too i think because yeah a lot of people get rich off the land and what we grow off from mother earth yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And one of the, that makes me think of another question in the survey was, um, one of the questions was about allow, or it was allowing that, allowing survey respondents to decide and based on a, a list and, and also giving you an opportunity to, to fill in the blank, if you could use this money for anything to build wealth, what would you use it for? And some of the things that were listed in there were land, like purchasing land, purchasing a home, um, starting a business. Because Native people, we don't have the same privilege as as white folks do in terms of like having generational wealth or having land that they've taken from us. We're starting from a very different place. So, what were some of the things that you thought of using the funds for? Um, for if if these funds were to be distributed to you, what would you like to see them be used for? Agriculture. Agriculture, because 
we have a lot of land that, like I said, it's got it's, it's corn land, you know, it's like a bread basket in this area. And there's an opportunity now that's been voted on and passed that um, marijuana, you know, and it seems like our tribe is having a lot of hoops to jump through to get to that point. Then purchasing the equipment. I even talked to this one farmer, he said he, he wouldn't do it because of the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of negativity to that chance of having an opportunity, especially with the ones with high percentage of land where mm -hmm. we could we could benefit from that that yeah. that part. And they had a um they had a, a workshop up in North Dakota because our tribe has grown hemp. Uh, I think we were going on six years now, and um, there's like 2,200 byproducts that we could use off of that hemp. And we have a bag factory, and it's small, but it's not enough to, because the population is always growing. Mm -hmm. Like old agency, we have seven districts. Old agency is one of the biggest districts. Enemy Simmons, the other one, and. Um, We've seen some ways of some money coming through with the uh, with the pandemic, and we got some funding in there. And what was unfair is the tribes, all I mean the districts, all split the same. Even though there's less head count in like say enemies and uh, uh, Buffalo Lake or you know the smaller districts, they all got the same as the big districts. And so everybody wants money, but you know. What? Five hundred dollars ain't nothing yeah. around here. It can go so fast, and with yeah. the prices of gas, and we already talked about our district. Me, we're looking at trucking. You know, that's mm -hmm. going to be kind of an issue because it's just part of America's turmoil we're going through right now at this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money goes so quickly. You're you're right. And so the nice thing too about this opportunity for the Collective Abundance Fund is it's a larger amount of money to do. To do to really kickstart uh, wealth building. So some of the options for how much money should or the amount of money that should be distributed is anywhere from ten to fifty thousand dollars, and it's for individuals so that we have a bigger chunk of money. Because like you said, five hundred dollars. If 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 uh, our tribes, for example, get a, a large amount of money and they per cap it out to all tribal members, it ends up not being very much sometimes. Yes. It, it you can you can get a you can get a little further for a couple weeks, but how do we really build long term sustainable wealth by having things like land, yeah. by having homes? Uh, so that's that's one of the unique things about this fund. But thank you so much for yes. for taking the survey and for sure. talking with us. Maybe what we'll do now is we'll drive around. I know that there's a couple more folks who took the survey who are going to okay. catch up to Start. an interview. Yeah, so let's let's um, look for them. Yeah, we're we're gonna hunt them down. Um, maybe we'll go over to the back to the stand. There might be somebody there that I think we were going to interview. Also, it's nice and cool riding in this. You get a you get a nice breeze. It's yeah. warm out here today. This fall week this year is pretty nice because of the weather. Yeah, we got a little rain last night, but. Wet down the dust. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for the ride, and thank you for taking the survey and for answering some questions for us. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. So, we'll see ya. Go, we're good to go, Doug. Yeah. yeah thank right. you. Okay, we'll yeah. see you. Yeah. All right. So we're we did, um, and we're still live, so we can talk to you guys next. Okay. Since you guys have a break now, not too long ago. I think you guys are okay. You're okay. Yeah. You can stay right there. So finally, a, a nice little lull. Um, I think everybody's going to take their. You can move over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the background, they'll be able to stop moving. Okay. So we're while we're getting adjusted here, not too long ago, this whole area was just like full of people. Like every single seat was taken. It was really cool to see people come up and and take the survey and hear about the survey just by word of mouth. This is about the second month into the survey. This is the third powwow we've been to, and I've talked to people that have said, oh, I took this survey at the last powwow we were at. I took this survey at Lower Sioux, and it's so cool. So it's really cool that two months in, we're, we're hearing people say that they've heard about it, whereas like maybe a couple of months ago, we had to do a little bit more explaining. So it's nice to see how, how the word has gotten out. 
So yeah, now we're here with Gabby and Terry with Indian Collective's uh, foundation team. And so now we can talk to the two of them a little bit more about what the Collective Abundance Fund is, what are some of the, the takeaways so far from the survey process, and uh, what to expect next. And so we'll start with uh, Gabby here. And so Gabby, uh, I think the, the last time you guys might have seen us going live on um, at the last POW for the Collective Abundance Fund survey, we had Terry, but this is our first time interviewing Gabby here with us. And so uh, first we'll ask Gabby to introduce yourself and tell us what you do for Indian Collective. Hamidak Yapi, good to be here. Gabby Strong, Sistan Wapton, Dakota. And really happy to be here on Sistan Wapton Oyate lands during the Swachipi, the celebration time. And being able to um, hear the voices from our people about this fun. You know, Terry and I have been working really hard. I'm the managing director of the foundation team which will be the team that will be responsible for distributing the funds next year. And Terry being program director, um, managing this effort for all of the outreach and the feedback and the planning and the design that will take place before these funds are distributed. So everything that you're offering on the survey, everything that you're saying, um, we're really going to take that um, into account for what actually happens next year. Not only what is being supported, but the way in which it's supported, how we support it. So thank you very much for um, just giving us the chance to be here, to have this booth, and to have the surveys collected during this time. Thanks, Gabby. So if you can also real quick share a bit about Indian Collective's grant making work. Some people might not be as familiar with, with our grant making work and why we were chosen to distribute, redistribute this nearly $50 million. So just maybe a quick overview of NDN Collective's grant making work. Yeah, so NDN Collective is, is pretty new and so is our grant making. We've only been grant making for about four years now. Um, and our grant, all of our grant making focuses on our key strategies and principles to defend and develop and decolonize, which means to defend our lands, our lifeways, our, um, our resources from extractive um, development. We believe in developing in a regenerative way that is um, earth-based um, and sustainable with our lands and our environment and to decolonize, which is to reclaim, renew, revitalize all of our languages, lifeways, um, ways of leadership and governance. And all of our grant making supports that in some way, whether it's the Change Maker Fellowship, whether it's the Radical Imagination Artist Grant, we have a community action fund that supports direct action and community self-determination which honors the self-determination of our people and our communities and their priorities and their strategies for the people and, and the communities and the nations um, that they are a part of. And so this effort was an extension of that. Um, we made some proposals of what could potentially be done um, and the Bush Foundation was really receptive to that. And not just the foundation, but they too had advisors um, from our native people and our nations um, from around the tri-state area, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota. So the fact that you know we were chosen to be able to be part of this and to present like a really viable way of distributing these funds which is also a larger part of a reclamation and a rematriation of resources that our people have gone without for a really long time. Because wealth has emerged from our lands, from, has emerged from the backs of our own people, our efforts, our um, relocation, our confinement. And so these, this is all part of a larger effort to reclaim that. And so what the possibilities are for our people to build wealth on our own terms, 
to realize our dreams and our aspirations on in our own way in a way that's important to us on how we define wealth which is um, what we hear and what we know having relatives having family being part of our land being part of our culture having strong culture and language um, having clean water all of those things matter to our people and so this fund is, is one of the ways that potentially we'll be able to do that. And uh, just feeling really blessed to be having this opportunity to support it. Thank you, Gabby. I'm glad you, you touched on just the disparity in wealth too. When we were driving around talking with Stephen Farmer, he mentioned one of the things that he thought about was land and how a lot of the, the farmers around here have access to land that tribal members don't even their land is so fractionated and so their abilities to do to build wealth or to build sustainable income on fractionated land doesn't exist because of, of allotment and and uh just just the very sim simple fact of like not having your own piece of land to do something with is is a really big factor in in uh wealth building and uh, this fund in particular was, was really a big part of it was to support and closing that wealth gap. Uh, so we'll go over to Terry next. I'm not sure if I'm sitting in, in the way of Terry, but uh, so we'll have Terry, you will introduce yourself next and uh, tell us what your role is here with the Collective Abundance Fund. Sure, greetings uh, relatives. Um, Terry Peterson, Amaki Apie, Damakota, um, Pejuta Zizik, Api, Hemataha, from the place where they dig the yellow medicine, also known as the Upper Sioux community. And yeah, I'm just really excited to be part of Indian Collective and this exciting and really groundbreaking um, initiative. This really is something, I, I shared this the last time we visited, but um, this doesn't happen. Like when people do grant making, um, oftentimes it's to organizations, for example, and this is directly going to individuals and families. But the other thing that's really unique about it is that usually um, funders make those decisions about what the fund, what the um, grant making should support, who should be eligible, and all those guidelines. And we're actually out here asking the people to help us um, design that. So that is a really historic and groundbreaking um, process. Yeah, and it's been really a lot of fun to be out in community, especially since the last time we visited up at um, Four Bears Powwow and coming here. Um, we feel really good because people are now actually just coming up and asking, can we take that survey? So we know like people are hearing about it, they're excited about it. Um, yeah, I'll just share that. Cool, thank you. So how long has the survey been live and active and out into the world for people to take? Yeah, really for a couple of months now. Um, and we are actually going to keep it open for a couple more weeks. Um, so people have until about July 15th to take this survey. Um, we're getting a great response out here today, um, even last night, and, and we'll be out here tomorrow as well. Great. Uh, and it makes me think of another question for you, Gabby. I know that there have been some questions from people about um, the planning process and the amount of funding that is spent on the planning process for the Collective Abundance Fund. Because we hear that, we've heard that big number back in 2021, December of 2021, Indian Collective receives a $50 million grant to redistribute. And now we're out traveling and in community, or administering the survey, giving out swag. And so some people have had questions about like the, the process and uh, the planning. Uh, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about like the, the process itself, why it is what it is and why it's important to, to spend resource, time, energy on, on being in community like this and, and, and even if you wanna speak to you know, the planning grant right, connected right. to this. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, it's true that big, the huge announcement went out. Bush Foundation, um, you know, awarded NDN $50 million to distribute. Um, and, and the planning process is related to that. 
Um, but we don't have 50 million yet. What we have is a $500,000 grant to do the planning, which is what we're doing right here, to do the outreach, to do the community engagement. This is all part of it. We said we would go out into community. We said we would administer surveys. We said we'd do interviews, focus groups, trying to get that community input and feedback um, about what we would do with $50 million. And so all of this, all of the thoughts, the conversations that we've been having, that's what's going into the planning. So the community engagement and outreach will end on July 8th. Our last event will be in Rapid City. I think it's Native Pop, that's next weekend. That'll be the last community outreach event. Surveys closed down, I think the 15th. And then from that, all of this will be synthesized, will be analyzed, and then we'll start making sense of that. Sense making of all of this feedback which then leads to the actual planning and design, the design of the fund itself. And we have a regional advisory committee that also uh, will be working with us on that. So they'll be helping us figure this all out. Um, we'll see what the priorities are, you know, what comes out of this survey, what are, what are the top priorities, you know, what, real, what is thematic, what really stood out for people. And that's what we're going to work with. And that's what we'll build into the program. That's what we'll build into the fund. We will fund what shows up in here. Um, and then the next step, though, is also to present this to the Bush Foundation and their advisors as well. So we don't have $50 million yet. We have $500,000 worth of planning money, which is what we're doing here today. Um, and December 31, 2022, that's our one year of planning. Next year, fingers crossed, hopefully, we do get that award based on all the work that we've done and distributed in the way that we've been advised and told to do. Yeah, thank you for making that important distinction. We don't have five or $50 million. We're not just sitting on it, holding on to it. Um, and then the last thing before I go back over to Terry too. So I know Gabby, you've been in grant making for a long time. You've done this work for a while. How is this opportunity really different and unique based on what you've seen over the years in grant making? Well, you know, I, I see, I'm starting to see um, some real shifts um, in how resources are being distributed. Um, I think there's a real shift to truly honoring community-based work, uh, community self-determination, uh, honoring communities and their strategies and their priorities, rather than supplanting from the outside somebody else's strategies, somebody else's priorities, uh, which are external. And so this is a huge opportunity and this is, it is, you know, precedent setting too and the way in which this is happening. What still needs to happen is some real shifts in power and decision making over some of those resources. Um, and that's, that slowly is happening too. But, you know, we, we continue to push for the full rematriation of wealth, our wealth. Um, based on our lands and our, our resources. Um, so to me, this is a drop in the bucket. 50 million sounds like a lot, but that's a drop in the bucket when you think of the amount of resources that have been taken from our people over time. This is just the beginning as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I, I, I have to really um, recognize the Bush Foundation for taking that bold move to do it in that way. and. And what I love about us at NDN, all of us, is that, you know, we're just as bold, too, in our messaging um, and with our voice. And so, um, yeah, this is, this is history, history <laughs> in the making. Yeah, thank you, Gabby. Appreciate your insight, knowing your, your experience. So we'll go back over to Terry now. So, Terry, you've been on the road with the Collective Abundance Fund for a while now, working really hard. and came came on board with NDN to lead this work. Uh, what do you think is really important to share with viewers right now about 
just the main intentions around this fund like what were what were some of the really key uh key values key pieces of building the the process the regional advisory committee just the whole big picture of what this planning and implementation will look like so yeah what were some of the biggest most important things as you've de you've been a part of leading the development of this work well i think one thing is that you know we're amongst relatives and so you know all of us at Indian Collective are of the people. Um, being out in community, having conversation with folks, um, these are our relatives. And so um, I think just being in relationship and having conversation and a discussion about what wealth means to us. Um, and I should say too that what's coming out is primarily people are saying there is a difference in the way that Native Indigenous people view wealth and so I'm anxious to hear like how that is and mm -hmm. so we'll find out when we when we have a report yeah. but um, I think one of the other things is that really being transparent about our process you know we have materials that are on our website and of course we're sharing them here as well with people about the process that we're doing the intentionality of really being being in community I think is really important um, and I would say the other is just um, the inclusivity you know really trying to reach a diverse group of people and it's really exciting Sarah, Sarah if I could share just a little yeah. bit so we ask you know some demographics in the survey and you know the reason we do we're not of course collecting people's names and and saying you know it's all it's all collective it's all combined all the information is combined um, but the reason that we ask about demographics is we want to be sure that we are reaching a cross-section that we're reaching across gender, demographics, um, ge geography, that we're reaching different age ranges, um, uh, people that, you know, what's their home ownership or their home situation look like, uh, diverse uh, income levels, all of that. And we are really getting a lot of diversity, um, uh, which is good because then we're getting diverse perspective and that's what collective means, right? It isn't just like from a, a narrow perspective. Um, and what that tells me is then that when we have these results, this information, the report, that we can really stand firm on it, that this is really truly collectively from the people. Yeah, truly designed by the people. So on that note, maybe you can share some about the numbers like how many people have taken the survey and how does that factor into this being a statistically valid survey yes, yes. i think it was maybe oh, two weeks ago we probably had a little a, a mini celebration internally at indian collective because we reached that statistical statistically significant number which was 2339 uh, 2339 people we're over 3,000 today, and I'm super excited about it. We have a great response out here today and um, looking forward even to tomorrow and, and next weekend. So, um, and we're gonna push too over the next couple of weeks uh, out through social media. We want all of you to, to really, um, this is your opportunity to, uh, to have your voice be heard. So yes, we're celebrating. We're gonna feel really good about these results because um, we've reached that, that mark that says, these are valid, yeah. What does that number represent? Like what fraction of the population of Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota? Sorry, testing you. Maybe you either have, of you, you either of you that remember. But basically it's like a fraction yes. of yes. the total population of indigenous people in those yes. three states. Yes. And so in order for the, the survey to be statistically valid, you need it to be like some sort of percentage, yes. right? Some magic number yes. that we can't remember, but yes. but yeah, it's really cool that it is statistically valid that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, folks can continue to take the survey, but for, for those that are interested in like NDN's process, we can say like, we went into community when we went all across these three states to survey people from showing up at powwows like this, mm -hmm. uh, doing the focus groups, and uh, and and now we're at a point of being statistically valid, and yes. we still have some some road ahead of us. So a few more weeks to do some surveys. Um, so the next thing I want to ask you, Terry, is is about some of the demographics a little bit more. What are some other things that really stood out to you in terms of? the surveys that have been completed so far, I know that we're eventually gonna be talking about like all of the findings, but what do you think is is really uh, exciting to share or what are some big takeaways from some of the data so far? Right. 
Right. So I, I have to look at my little notes here, Sarah, if you don't mind. And we get these updated every week from our, our partner, Kaufman and Asso uh, Associates. And, and they're a native-led firm. We really, um, we really value working with uh, Indian relatives. Um, and so we, we meet and we talk about um, how, how to make sure we reach, um, again, that really diverse sector. Um, but right now, I can share with you that we have primarily a lot of people from the 25 to 34 year, eight year old and 35 to 44 year olds. Um, we were a little shy on the younger group, but I think um, I th after this weekend, I think we'll see that number come up along with our elders. So really quickly, so the younger group, what age range would that be? Yeah, 18 to 24 year old. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so that we're, we're looking for more 18 to 24 mm -hmm. year olds to take the survey, but this weekend, there's definitely been quite yes. a few young folks that have come up. Yep, yep. So we'll we'll look at that uh, information again next week with our partner, and and we should see a, a real bump in that. Um, the other kind of thing that stands out to me is, um, you know, if you look at the census data of Native people, Indigenous people in the tri-state area, um, South Dakota has the most Native people, and ironically. We have 49% of our results are coming out of South Dakota, people that are residing in South Dakota. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, we are hoping for a little bit more of our North Dakota relatives to come out. So if you're here at Siston or you're going to be at Native Pop at Rapid City, please come. And of course, you can just go on our website and take the survey as well. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see, what else could I share with you? Well, one. One, um, and I, you know, I say this not to like uh, deter anybody. We, we really value everybody's opinion and we want them to, to really, um, you know, fill out the survey from their heart and what they really um, believe in. But I will say that for the most part, people are saying that, yes, there is a difference in the way that um, native uh, indigenous people view wealth. The other is that um, people primarily believe that their culture and life ways play a role in how they provide for their family. So I think that's really interesting. Um, of course, we're gonna hear more about uh, what people call the qualitative data, the, the words and, and like digging deeper into why um, people feel a certain way. And uh, that information will be coming out in August in a report. And I want everybody to make sure you go to our website at Indian Collective check out Collective Abundance Fund and make sure you take a look at that report because it'll be a cul culmination of our collective voices across the tri-state area. So this information will all be transparent and be available for people to take a look at. Yeah, another thing I think that oftentimes doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Cool, thank you, Terry. Mm. Anything else before we move on from the demographics. Anything else that is really, really cool and exciting? Um, I, you know, for me, just like, again, looking at the demographics and we really are gaining um, uh, voices from different, um, you know, how people are living. So we have people that own their own home. And let me, let me see here. I think it was around 30%. Yep, 34%. We have 30% that live with other people. And we have 24% that rent and 7% that are from a dormitory. So we know that we're also then getting uh, folks that are in, um, in higher education. Mm -hmm. So again, just really a cross sector. Um, yeah, I think that's just really, it's so important that we have um, not just coming from one particular particular voice or opinion so I feel good about that um, one more thing that I want to share is that some of the top ways that people are voicing that the collective abundance fund should support um, and I'll just name kind of maybe the top five home ownership purchase and repair and creating that stability of home ownership so I'm not surprising we know that statistically um, we we are um, you know have a, a, a a lower home ownership rate across and you know that's kind of one of the typical things that we hear um, in uh, mainstream wealth building around home ownership so it's not surprising home ownership is rising to the top um, education child care uh, paying off debt yeah that's another one and then business investments and I should say too I remember um, some of the data also shared some of the uh, population was um, folks are really interested in uh, entrepreneurship and we have a number of um, 
uh, business owners that are taking the survey as well. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Are you able to share anything about some of the tribes and communities who are leading in completing the survey? I know that when people take the survey, they could also identify like which tribe they're affiliated with in Minnesota, North yes. Dakota, or South Dakota. Yeah, so we have a lot of people from Crow Creek taking this survey. Yay. Yes, <laughs> hooray! And a lot of folks from um, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. We really expect to see a bump in our Sist and Wapton relatives mm -hmm. here after um, this weekend. So those are our top uh, tribal people coming in, but I uh, just want to challenge all of us from the 23 Native Nations and more to really come in and take the survey. Have your voice be counted. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, so one of the things that was cool for me coming here after not being in Lower Sioux, but being at Four Bears, was sitting here and then talking to some people that were already familiar with the Collective Abundance Fund because they saw you all set up yeah. at Lower Sioux. And I talked to actually a young relative who I think he's about 21 years old and has his own family now and uh, was pushing his, his baby around in, in a the stroller with his partner. I think he's just a recent graduate of college and he was just so excited. He's like, I've been telling all my friends to go take it. Um, it's so cool. This is such a cool thing. We get to define like what, what the grant is for and how much. And he just felt really empowered to have that opportunity as a young person, as a young family man. Uh, and that was really, really cool. Uh, but uh, Gabby, if you could share too, I know you've been, you were at Lower Sioux, you've been a part of this process as the managing director of NDN Foundation, what have been some of the reactions that really stood out to you as you've gone around and been a part of this process, either with the regional advisory committee or after people have just freshly taken that survey? What are some of the responses to you that really stand out? I think it's, um, I think the term collective abundance itself really challenges our thinking into a different way a different and i heard i overheard a gentleman even here today talking about this mindset that we have you know and um you know being very grounded in our struggle which we know very well being very grounded in um you know the things that challenge us but also this allows us an opportunity to think um, about potential and possibility and vision and dreams and aspirations. And that's what stood out for me is like people have said, wow, this really made me think because we're always asked what our gaps are, what our needs are. Um, everything is need based. But we've kind of flipped that a bit. And we all know what they are. I mean, I'm sure we all know what our disparities and our needs are. But what we really want to tap into with this is what are what is the potential? What are the possibilities? What is your most radically imagined vision for your future, for your family, and your livelihood? and being able to provide for your family, take care of your family. I think that's what stood out for me. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, same for me too. I think even when I took the survey individually as a resident of South Dakota as well, it was just really exciting like the to go through this series of questions that are really making you recognize this this uh, mind frame of scarcity that this world of capitalism and colonization has really programmed us to, to without even realizing it sometimes, uh, think and, and see the world in that way. And for Native people, especially being so impacted by historical trauma and generational trauma, you know, sometimes there's some negative thinking that we don't even realize is holding us back. But this fund, the framing of questions is totally about possibility and, and, and not just as fun, but also all of Indians work, you know, let's think of the solution. Let's think of the possibility we've been, we've been intentionally, uh, you know, colonized in such a way that makes us feel so disenfranchised. The disenfranchisement was systematic. It was intentional. It was so sinister that, uh, it's st it still, there's residual effects of it today. And so we have to be just as intentional in undoing that with really, 
uh, really optimistic and, and hopeful and radically imagined uh, ways of looking at our future. And so I think this fund and, and the survey and the questions definitely uh, made me feel that way too. And uh, so, so just really like, you know, and, and appreciate the way that uh, you all and Kaufman and Associates went about developing that survey. Um, so, and then over to you, Terry, what were some of the things that stood out to you so far, like reactions from people as they've taken the survey so far? And just a bit ago, like I was saying earlier, as we came over uh, from our, our golf cart ride, that there was some open seats here. But for a while, you had like several people filling every mm -hmm. seat, people standing, people just hearing about it. People who had taken the survey are bringing back their grandma to take the survey or their mom or their child, mm -hmm. uh, just feeling excited. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the responses that you've heard this weekend or even in Lower Sioux mm -hmm. that really stayed with you? Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing might be that it the words that are not spoken. I mean, people coming back after taking the survey and bringing their relatives over to take the survey tells me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but also I've heard people say, these are hard. These are hard questions. But they're saying it in a way that is like really making people pause and stop and think. And so, um, you know, we're inundated with, you know, kind of materialism and, you know, those quick things and you know accumulation how you know commercialism all of that and this really helps helps us to take a pause and really think about what makes us live in a good way what's sustainable and you know people are talking about family and um, health and things like that 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 um, oh, and I, um, I've also heard people talk about just like being um, in relationship and being around family and relatives and, and living in a way that um, supports health and well-being. Yeah, so, but this has been a lot of fun. Um, we don't have to try to stop people and tell them, tell them about the whole thing. People are out there spreading the word for us and just coming up and taking the survey. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, who are some of the, like, you don't have to name the people, but I know that as as I came up, you all mentioned like different groups of people that came over, like a drum group or or veterans. Who are some of the groups of folks that you've seen come over yeah. so far? Yeah, we did. We had like a uh, a gentleman from one of the drum groups came over, and then um, and then he came back and said, "Can you hand me some more of those surveys? I'll take them over to um, to the guys on the drum." So that's really cool. Um, we've had uh, young people come back and bring their grandma and have them sit down and fill out the survey and um, and then we've had like um, uh, a mother and uh, her young son take the survey together so that's yeah it's exciting yeah yeah cool all right well um, I think we're gonna try to go interview a couple other people too but is there anything else that either of you feel is really important for for viewers to know uh, maybe any other like really critical questions that have come up that maybe not necessarily even questions, but just takeaways so far mm -hmm. in the process that you think are important to leave people with as they're maybe thinking about taking the survey or or just thinking about what wealth means to them. And so I know that's a really big nebulous question, but just an opportunity to, to weigh in on anything else and share anything else before we... Yeah, yeah I'll say one more thing. Um, also, this came out was... Um, most people are saying there should be some requirements for application or, you know, for a grant to be made. Um, and what's rising to the top on one of the questions is, um, like, uh, if kind of like financial advisement or not having the, um, like, the planning. Those are barriers that people are kind of recognizing. And I'm super excited because to what Gabby is speaking of is, like, how do we kind of unshackle from that negative mindset? And and we've all at Indian Collective experienced um, a curriculum around healing from money trauma. Mm -hmm. And so we want to incorporate that into this, um, uh, this grant making program so that people can also have that same experience. Like money is just a tool, but what is it for? Like, is it to have it all piled up? And you know, what is it really for? And so, um, talking about um, kind of the intention around um, wealth building. And so we wanna provide that support for folks. And you know, it's something to be developed. And again, we're, we're really waiting to hear from folks about some of those more specific things that they're looking for. And we'll take that into consideration, but we are kind of thinking about that, planning on, around that, providing support for folks. 
Um, and then I guess I would just, you know, want to say that we have like, what, what day is it? Is it the second? So we have like two weeks left. So please, um, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Um, and just encourage you to come take the survey. I hope you have some conversation in your family about what wealth, um, what does wealth mean for your, for your family and, and um, even for your children and have that discussion. I think it's a good discussion for all of us to think about in terms of sustainability and again, um, how we define wealth as indigenous people. Terry. Mm -hmm. Then what about you, Gabby? Just any last words or important things to leave viewers with as they're thinking about this survey or the Collective Abundance Fund? Just that we want to hear from you relatives. We really want your voice and your thoughts on this. And also huge gratitude to all of the powwow committees and communities that have welcomed us in. And especially here at, at Sistan Wapton Oyate, we had to go through an RIB rush approval process, which was really cool. I just want to say it's cool knowing that there's an IRB here that really cares about who is like conducting survey and research in our tribal boundaries. So totally cool and uh, really appreciate it. Appreciate the approval and the welcoming. So Wopiratanka Chichapia. What's an IRB? Internal Review Board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. they basically require that any surveys that mm -hmm. are administered are like approved yep. so that people aren't like extracting data. Exactly. From yep. Yeah. And we're mm -hmm. not causing harm while we're yeah. on right. this. Right. Yeah. 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 And filming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Thank you both so much. And uh, I think we, we might see you both or we might be at Native Pop next week. Not sure not sure but the last event that we'll be in community for uh, but in the meantime the survey is available on the Indian Collective website we'll drop it in the chat we will uh, continue to share information and, and do some storytelling around the Collective Abundance Fund and make sure you all are informed about the process and then in August you mentioned is when uh, the findings of the survey will come out oh and then I want to make sure and and uh, not not skip this part though too so the survey closes in uh in a couple of weeks july 8th you mentioned no, july 15th. oh 15th 15th sorry i got a couple the 8th is native pop yep, uh, and the 15th, 15th is one okay pop. okay and and uh before we close out could you just go over the timeline really quickly of of disbursement or from the time the survey closes to what happens next all the way to disbursement of funds. Sure, so I know um, this is on our website too, so you can take a look at it. But again, we're gonna close out this community engagement process. It's been, pro it's just been a blast. Um, so we're gonna close that out mid-July here, and then we're gonna um, you know, get this report in August and spend some time uh, making sense of all the information, but and, and along with our regional advisory committee and, and others, um, but then to go into a planning and design process and again just really being intentional about um, hearing from our community relatives here about that what that should look like how should we be designing the grant program so we'll spend some time there and then of course you know what Sarah it takes um, effort it takes uh, resources and people to really um, to uh, distribute funding grant making um, and so we'll we'll talk about and figure out what capacity do do we need at Indian Collective uh, within the foundation and and beyond like in our finance and all of that um, so we'll spend some time doing that through the end of the year and then um, we're expected to do a uh, we'll have a pre-launch by December 15th that will really share out to the community what the um, intent uh, of the program will look like the grant program and then we'll do, um, we'll, we'll open uh, the application process in the first quarter of 2023. Mm -hmm. so people can prepare or anticipate to be able to apply in the first quarter of 2023. Yes. So January, February, March ish. Yes. Somewhere in there. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you both so much and yeah. hope you guys can enjoy a nice little break. I know you've all been out here for several hours already and we'll be out here for the rest of the day. Yep. What about tomorrow? Yes, we okay. will be here tomorrow again. Um, so if you missed us today, hit us up tomorrow. We'll be here in the morning.
Okay, so yeah, if anyone is at the Sisseton Powell, come check us out over here. Take the survey. We have paper surveys. We have the QR code. And uh, you'll get to pick up a gift for taking the survey. So uh, thanks so much, everyone. And thank you, Gabby and Tina, or Tina, Terry. Terry. <laughs> we have a, we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tina, <laughs> Tina is another team member. Uh, thank you both so much. And I think we're going to go try to catch another person to survey. Or not to survey, another Actually, you know what? They might have. They might be gone. We had some people lined up. I think she's sitting up there. Oh, there she is right there, actually. There's Misty. Okay, so we're going to go grab one more person to just hear some of their reflections on the Collective Abundance Fund survey. So thanks so much. Thanks all. Get some lemonade. We'll see you all, and thank you, Sharon. Okay, so yeah, it's on. So we're on supper break now. Like I mentioned, it's getting warm out here. I could use a lemonade. There's a chow line over there. They're doing a feed. Um, we're gonna try to catch up with a couple of folks who have taken the survey. There's some people as we've made some space. It looks like there's some more people coming in to take the survey. Hi. It's running into relatives and nieces and nephews over here. Is really nice. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much everyone for hanging with us as we're walking through the Sisseton Wapton powwow here on the Lake Traverse Sisseton Wapton Dakota Reservation. I'm Sarah. We got Zoe on camera here. These are some of the beautiful stands to check out. And uh, we're trying to catch up with a couple of other folks who we connected with earlier today to talk to us about their experience with the survey and, and what really stood out to them. I'm looking to see if I could find our person. It's they may have they may have gotten away. So all right, well I think we'll we'll uh Okay. Was there somebody over there? Miss Ma'am, do you want to throw my hands out the thing? You want to? I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap for now. But thanks okay. so much, everyone, for hanging with us here at the powwow with Indian Collective and the Collective Abundance Fund. Like Terry and Gabby mentioned, we're going to be here through the rest of the evening and then also to tomorrow as well. So here's our stand. We got the surveys on one side and we have all of the cool swag and merch on the other. So come by and check us out. Fill out a survey, get a water bottle, a backpack, a t-shirt. There's some coffee mugs also. So come check us out. Visit with Terry and Gabby. They're so fun. And uh, check out the Collective Abundance Fund at the Indian Collective website at Indian Collective. Dot org and check out the grant making section collective abundance fund we'll make sure to put that link in the chat there and and take the survey thanks so much everyone